One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hello guys, Drifty here. Welcome to another tutorial. Well, it's more of like an update than tutorial, but uh, you know, since the last update, it's been like nine months since my last uh, tutorial, so the game kind of needs one because the game has changed a lot. Like comparing my older tutorial to this tutorial, like you will see a lot, like a lot has changed. So um, yeah, so this is the, the this is the starting screen solo groups you have donations if you want to donate to uh the, the dev dudes one very important thing solo in groups there is no such thing as solo lobbies there's no such thing as group only lobbies the uh, player base is way too small um for these types of lobbies to come in so they're all mixed just for clarification for everyone these are all mixed servers so uh we have three maps original maps made by dev dudes we have seaboard which is all ranges, CQC, sniping, anything you want. Metro is only based in close quarters combat, so it's all CQC, very fast paced. And we have Canada, which is just sniping. I mean, <laughs> I mean Canada and Seaboard are mostly the same, but Canada is a lot more open, so you can just set yourself up and snipe. The factory, this is not made by Dev Dudes, neither is. Dead Zone, but Dead Zone is being worked on by Eli, so I guess you want to say that Dead Zone is made by by Dev Dudes, but it is not originally by Dev Dudes. It's going to be a separate game with the old. Pretty much, it's just going to be Dead Zone, but now remade. That's what it is. Factory is made by Alton, so that's pretty much a Tarkov remake. The game itself is named Project Tarkov, so it's a Tarkov copy, but with its own twist. It's gonna have the same maps as Tarkov as well. It's a really good game, but it takes time for them to have animations and whatnot. There's a lot of bugs in the game too. And both these maps use the uh, pre-alpha anarchy framework. So just so there isn't any confusion in that. So let's just hop in Seaboard and let's continue with this tutorial. Um, so uh, Eli has removed starting loadouts and he has nerfed them to the point where you only spawn the pistols. You cannot spawn with anything else, you don't spawn with NPG, you don't spawn in with any attachments. I mean attachments, it's, it's probably the best you can get as a flashlight to spawn with, but okay. So the first thing we're gonna go through is controls. So uh, to press, to get your inventory out, it's gonna be tab. And this is your inventory right here, everything you need. To walk around, WASD, it's pretty typical. Shift to sprint, C will be to crouch, press C again to go prone. You can also use X to stand up, you can use space to stand up, well not space but shift. It will just start running, it will automatically make you stand up. So <coughs> how to loot, okay, that's a lot of people ask this question. So if you come up to any crate, any, any like crate like this, or uh, like these long metal crates or shipping crates, which are down there, the brown ones. Uh, you get a prompt that says F to open. Uh, let me get a better example here. F to open it up. Uh, to scroll through these, you, you, you I mean the answer is within the, the word itself. You just you use your scroll wheel to go up and down. And then you press F to take it uh, from, from here. You just take F and it goes into your inventory. One thing you cannot, um, you cannot uh, twist these around. So if they're like uh, one by two, you cannot turn them around to be upside down and whatnot. So the, uh, these stay as is. Within the inventory itself, we have blood milliliters. So this is your HP right here, thousand two hundred. Now don't get confused about this this is not a lot of hp <laughs> the the guns deal quite a lot of damage and thus you can die very very easily in this game so your calories your milliliters and your stamina now calories and milliliters uh, equal to stamina so uh, the, the more you have calories and milliliters the more stamina you will have so you have two stamina. you have your total stamina and then you have your uh, stamina which goes down whenever you run. 
So when you run, your stamina goes down a lot faster than it would right now. It would go twice as fast. And you find food. As such, I have a ocean spray juice down here. So if you want to ask how you drink this, so you right click and then you can use this. It takes you to this animation here, you just press the left click to drink it. And then your milliliters went up as well as your stamina. Uh, for example, if you, let's say this heal down here. So if you hover your mouse over it, it tells you everything you need. The heal amount, poison removal, how much stamina it decreases because each meds decrease your stamina as well as your milliliters. Uh, so that's one uh, thing to account for. And same thing goes with guns, food, anything else, ammunition. It tells you everything you need within those stats. Now, uh, comparing this to my older uh, Anarchy tutorial, you do not spawn with NPG anymore. So, to how to get NPG, you will have to look around through shipping containers, these long metal crates, attachment boxes, anything that you know spawns loot, you will have a chance of finding uh, battery packs. And with those battery packs, you can uh, pretty much use them the same way that you would eat, drink, apply mats to yourself. It, it's, it's all the same. You equip it and then you can press N to turn them on. So maps. Let's talk about maps. There's multiple maps, three of them, and each map actually has its own map in the Discord. So right now on the screen you see the State of Anarchy map. So we are at storage right now. Uh, storage is pretty much good for like any stamina items, food, meds. That's that's uh, what it spawns. Uh, beside us is a uh, security checkpoint. So again, down there, any any other place than lumber and storage is good for weapons. My my favorite spots to hang out in would be uh, storage. Storage. I'll talk about this uh, prompt thing in a minute. Storage, milli base, gas, lighthouse, anything on the edge is the best places to be at for loot and whatnot. We have a guy down here. Just kill him real quick. Hi there, sir. Okay, he's dead. So any one of these places would be pretty much good for loot. They all spawn guns. So now let's talk crates. So there's a lot of crates. For example, this is a tier 3 case. Like all these crates will spawn a, var a variety of good weapons to use. Uh, some deal more damage, some deal less damage, but let's not talk about this now. Uh, weapon transport crates. These ones down there, the big crates, they spawn the most loot out of all. And in crates like these, you have a very big chance of getting really good weapons. Now, the chance is still rare, but it's obviously a lot better than, you know, using pistols for most of the time. Or a shitty semi-auto gun. And then we have stashes, which is the, the ones in between. They spawn half the loot that you would normally find in these transport crates. rifle cases. So these rifle cases spawn less loot out of everything else where you can find guns. And there's another guy over there. That's kind of cool. Alright, he's dead. So then we have the military crates. In these military crates you can find such uh, ammo, attachments, mags, food even. And you can find NVG probably has the highest spawn rate in these military crates, but just know that NVGs are insanely rare to find. It is not easy at all to find, so don't think you will just find it easily like that. Alright, so let's talk ammo-wise. Uh, I'd say the best um, 
guns to use would be 762 by 39, 545 by 39, 556 by 45. So that's any AK platform, any M4 platform, any HK platform. Um, submachine guns have a lot less recoil than obviously your AKs and M4s, but you can decrease your recoil by applying attachments to your gun. So for example, this DTK2 I put on this AK, I can demonstrate now. So this is an AKU, your normal, no, this is your AK-74 UN, this is your typical AKU. The recoil isn't so bad on this, but if you apply a DTK-2, you can see how noticeable the uh, recoil is, like it, it's decreased by a lot. And uh, this is just a DTK-2. So now, if you hover over this attachment, for example, it tells you all the stats that you need to know. So you're probably looking at this and you're so confused. It is not that hard to read attachments. So um, if you see X and Y recoil, it says minus 0.55 and minus 0.6 on Y. So the lower number that is, the better it is and the less recoil you will have. So for example, a negative 0, 7, negative, negative 0, 8. So the 7 and 8 would be worse and have more recoil than the 55 and 6 that we have on the AK right now. So that's how to read muzzle de uh, devices. Uh, about attachments like lasers, flashlights, holographic sights, and any reflex sights, uh, to scopes, the... Um, the higher the number, I actually forgot. <laughs> it's been it's been quite some time, but um, you wouldn't really account. It, it's it's a tiny difference for attachments, but I'm pretty sure it's still it still works the same way. The lower the number or the or the closest to zero it is, the uh, the better it will be. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it works the same way. Um, I don't, I don't have any more attachments on this to, to compare to, but, uh, yeah, anyways, the more attachments you put on your gun, the, the less recoil you will have, and I'm pretty sure for all attachments, it's, it's the closest to zero, the better. Okay, so, let's go back to talking about guns. So, here we have 5 for 5, we have 7.62, and then we have pistol caliber, which is... 9.19 and then we have a Mosin caliber so it goes from lowest recoil to highest recoil but again the sniper rifle is a sniper rifle you can put a muzzle device on it and you won't have any recoil whatsoever on a sniper so uh, within these ammo types we have pretty good. so we have energy so energy is pretty much the power of the bullet and how much damage it will do so 617 energy would be like two to three uh, shots to kill a person within close range. Obviously, uh, the longer the range, the more uh, shots you'd have to shoot a person with to kill them because there is damage drop off on the range. So if I shoot someone with this AK, like say example the street down here, I will two shot the person if I move back here that will be like three shots and then obviously longer range would be four shots because damage drop off uh with this akm right here again one shot this close with the akm that is 760 by 39 because that is already 3200 so energy and let's talk mosin ammo so anything that's above 4000 energy or close to 4000 energy it's like three, 3,900 something, I guess. That will be one shot. So anything close to 4,000 energy, that is a one shot any range. No matter how, how close you are, no matter how long you are, it will always one shot the person. Now that's gonna change when we get an armor update and different ammo type update in this game. Uh, so until then, anything above 4K energy, that will one shot 
and here is so the 5 for 5 has 1.5k energy so yeah like two shots here uh, close range to to kill a person it's it's pretty easy to understand you pretty much just need time and game to understand all of this stuff uh, recoil isn't so bad for guns it's not like your call of duty 9x19 uh, or AK spray where it's like there's some insane amount of recoil that's like you can barely control. Yes, AKM has a lot of recoil uh, stock, but you can you can change you can change this with attachments like this. This was me controlling recoil, but this isn't me controlling recoil. This isn't quite a lot of recoil for some people. But again, the, the more weapon skill you have, the better you can control the recoil. But um, the DTK2 actually doesn't fit. I'll talk about this in a second. So this oil filter suppressor is a 7676. So if I put this on, I don't have any ammo. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Just reload the mags. So while I'm doing this, actually, you can reload your magazines by simply unloading your mags, drag and drop. It's that easy. Just just unload and then drag and drop your ammo types into your ammo. Um, as long as it's the same ammo type, it will fit. You know, that's, that's not really that confusing. Just AK type, ammo goes into AKs. Now obviously there's different AK types like 762, 545, but that's only two different types for now. It's not really that confusing. So this is the recoil not, not controlling it with the oil filter suppressor. So you can see that's a lot less recoil and that is not a lot of recoil to control so that is very controllable now obviously different attachments uh, decrease a lot more but obviously with the more decreased recoil the rarity goes up and you can't find it that easily because it's extremely rare now what's the weapons i would recommend uh, some people say what's well, the best weapon in the game, some people say some guns should be nerfed. Uh, th this this is based off realism. This is not your Tarkov, your Call of Duty, your whatever you want this to be. This is a survival game. Now this game is based off um, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, Fallout series, Metro series, uh, with Tarkov aesthetics. But, you know, uh, there are no mutants, there are no zombies in this game. So people just pretty much call this Tarkov. But, you know, the finished product of this game will look more and feel more like Stalker and your post-apocalyptic games. Right, let's talk bullet drop. Uh, the lower energy your bullet has, the higher the bullet drop will be. Now, this also depends on the barrel length of your gun, which you have in your stats. So for example, it says barrel length 415 mil millimeters or 16.3 inches. Um, now, all both of these come to play, both the energy and barrel length. So, for example, let's, let's say 9x19 will have a lot of drop. 5x5 will have also quite a bit of drop, but you can still snipe with it, kind of. Uh, 7.62x39, now this barely has any drop. Now it has some, but it's not a lot. And then your 54 ore uh, pretty much doesn't have a lot of drop. It's it's just very small bit of drop. I mean, if you want to snipe extremely long distances, then you know, you're going to have to compensate for some drop. But again, I can't tell you exactly how much this is. You will have to figure this out yourself. And, you know, while you're playing the game. What guns are the best? Again, as I said, um, there is no best weapon in this game. The best weapon you can get is that has the most attachments, that has less recoil. So it all just boils down to how much attachments you have on your gun. And with different guns, there's obviously different fire rates. The, ha the, fi the faster your fire rate, the more recoil your gun is going to have. Now that also depends on the caliber of the gun. Um, let's say, for example, take the Scarrel with 5.56, and let's take the HK416C. That is also 5.56. 
Now the recoil on the Scarrel is 600 RPM and the fire rate on the HK will be like I think 900-ish, 950 RPM. So the, uh, drastic, <laughs> that's scary. The, the recoil on the HK will be a lot more or a lot more aggressive than the Scarrel. The Scarrel won't have any recoil with all attachments on the gun. And that's that's all I can say. So uh, I hope you guys learned something from this tutorial and just remember you will die a lot in this game. This game is not a run and gun shooter. Uh, you gotta play smart, you gotta know the maps, you gotta know the game itself, you gotta know what to do, what to take, what not to take. You will die a lot in this game. So I hope you guys learned something from this and have a great day guys. See you.